If you're lucky enough to have never seen something that looks like this in your car then let me explain. A lot of factory cars run their transmission coolers as part of their radiator and when that radiator fails the transmission fluid can mix with the engine coolant and result in a toxic mix that looks a little bit like a milkshake. Despite looking like a tasty milkshake, this can quickly do huge damage to your car, destroying your gearbox and even causing engine damage. That's why fitting an external transmission cooler should be a high priority on your car if you have a system similar to the one we've described, and that's what we'll be doing today. Oh, uh, my car actually hasn't done this yet. This is just strawberry milk, which, if you believe what some people say, is probably just about as bad for you. So, while I finish this, I hope you enjoy this video. Cheers. Hey guys and welcome to Brownie's Garage. As I mentioned up top there, today we'll be fitting an external trans cooler to my BAXR6 Falcon. While the general process will be much the same for many different cars, the kit we'll be using is to suit the BA specifically. It may also be transferable to many 4-speed auto Falcons and Territories, and there are also kits available for those cars with 6-speed autos, and they do sell universal kits as well. So let's have a look at the kit and how it comes. As you can see there, this is a PWR product. They're an Australian company, and I'll have a link to where I've purchased this from down in the description below. Uh, this kit will normally run you right around the $200 mark. Uh, on the box, it does show that this has been inspected by O2. So thank you to O2 out there. I believe that's 007's older brother. They weren't very creative with the naming in that family. Opening up the box, it does come with fitting instructions, which initially I've been quite impressed with. They are quite detailed and they've got loads of pictures and diagrams to help you install it. Uh, pick, plenty of pictures there of what you're doing on actual cars, so quite impressed with that off the bat. We then have our actual cooler, which is in there, which we'll leave sealed up for now, because knowing me, if I don't, I'll drop it. Next up. We've got our brackets, which are pre-made and ready to install for this kit, as it is a kit to suit this particular car. So they're there. We then have all our fittings, and there's also these cable ties. Now, these, uh, as mentioned in the instructions, can be fitted to your aircon condenser if perhaps this was a universal kit, you could do that or if you're running a large intercooler or something that will get in the way of those mounting brackets which have included, so quite handy. I will say it is recommended though to use a bracket to fit these rather than these, but it gives you the option there. A load of other fittings there as well, which we'll cover as we go along. And of course, it comes with your hoses as well, ready to go. So hopefully quite an all-inclusive kit and hopefully will be a bolt-on kit. Let's see how it goes, but I'm pretty confident in this. Let's get started, and to get started, first we'll need to take off the front bumper from our car. On this car, the guard behind the grille will need to come off. Easy enough with only four trim screws or scrivets holding it on. You can then access the two bolts, one in each corner behind this trim. You'll also have some scrivets and screws to remove from each wheel well for the splash guard panel. Just remove the ones that actually go into the bumper. All of this may be possible with the car on the ground and wheels still on, but it will be a lot easier without them. There will then be some 7mm bolts that hold on the plastic under tray that is connected under your bumper. How many bolts are here will depend on how hard a life the car has had, and it's not unusual for the under tray to have been completely thrown away. Don't be that guy. Go ahead and disconnect your fog light wiring while you're under there if you have them. Lastly, there should be a clip at each back corner of the bumper that you simply pull the bumper away from and your bumper should be ready to come off. Now with that out of the way, we can start looking at mounting our new cooler. Just a quick note before I do that, I have also removed the thermo fans for later in the install. Two screws for your intake snorkel that goes over that, two bolts 
and a wiring connector and you can just lift your thermos out. It'll give you a heap more room when we're working on that side, so do that. I've also removed the factory horns from here. It is just one bolt and one spade connector and it'll give you heaps more room. I thought it might be a bit tight getting the cooler in there with those at the moment. And for anyone looking at these couple of pieces of pool noodle, no, I didn't run through a school sports swimming carnival. They'll be in a video coming up uh, shortly after this one, I believe. So keep an eye out for a link on those, trying to fix some bumper sag. So part of what I really like about this kit is that that mount should all bolt up using factory holes and factory studs. I've gone ahead and made a start on this. So the top bolts into two holes up here that were blank. There was only a wiring connector on this side and there's a provision just to move it forward on your bracket there. So that bolts up in front of your bonnet lever there. Then we go to the bottom mounts. Now mine was slightly bent on this because I think it's bottomed out or hit something in the past. So I had to tweak those and bend them back to where they should be a little bit. But they actually use your factory power steering studs there. So there's a small power steering cooler line up here just looped around the front. So undo the nuts on the end of the studs there. Pull your power steering cooler off. You can then slip the brackets in behind it and put your power steering cooler straight back on, tighten it down, and that's what it uses for the bottom mount. Nice and simple. Leave everything loose for now in there and we can start putting our new cooler on. So I found it easier to lift it up through the bottom and I won't actually mount it just yet. I'll do that quickly off camera because it is a little fiddly, but that's where it'll sit there. It's got studs on those brackets bolt it to those studs and then tight everything down and we'll be ready to move over to bypassing the factory cooler in the radiator and running our lines up to here. Here you can hopefully see your factory hard lines. So our top line here and our bottom line way down the bottom there. Bypassing this should be pretty cool because it looks like it's dead simple. So we'll undo our factory hard lines top and bottom. We're then given these blank bungs to put in that radiator side where we remove those lines. So that'll screw in and blank those off in there. It then also gives us this stud to mount a locating bracket, which they've provided. That will also help to hold those hard lines and secure those because the other end will now be a flexible hose. The kit then has these hose adapters, which will go onto the male end of your hard lines once they're removed and adapt it to this nice barbed fitting. That will also help secure your brackets over those hard lines. So the hard line will go through and we'll tighten this over the top. So as I said, this then gives us a nice barbed fitting for the new hoses to go over and the supplied hose clamps and then work it through to your front cooler. It shows you in the instructions roughly where to work these through. And it also gives some nice clamps and uh, cable ties to help us secure those rubber lines so they're not rubbing on anything. So they look quite good as well. All of that will of course make a lot more sense once it's done. So I'll get back to work on that and we'll share the results when we're done. Hoses are run, everything's on, and we're just about done. So, as always, this is cars, so it's taken longer than expected, but it's all gone really well. A few quick tips. The hoses, I would fit those to your barbed fittings and then screw them onto the hard lines. Obviously, don't connect them at this end, so you can still turn them, but that will make it a lot easier. It is quite tight in there getting those barbed fittings onto your, your uh, old hard lines. On the hard lines, you will have to bend those a little bit from their original position. Don't be too worried, just make sure you don't kink them, but they are fairly soft, so you will be able to bend them and move them into a position that better suits where they'll need to be now. So, it's time to start the car and check for leaks. 
and we'll also have to check the fluid level. This will actually increase your transmission fluid capacity, so we'll have to top that up as well. Let's get to it. To do this, you want the car to be sitting as level as possible. It's best at this stage to recruit someone to sit in the driver's seat for you. On this car, you need to start the car and run through the gears before checking the fluid level, but we needed to do this anyway to check for leaks, so do this before checking the level. This is where the assistant comes in, making sure the car won't move. How to check and fill the automatic transmission fluid can be different on many cars, and if you have a dipstick, this is made a lot easier. Lucky you. No leaks, so we're ready to check the fluid level. Make sure the car is off and the transpan is not hot to the touch. Be careful around the exhaust while doing this, as it may still be hot. Remove the fill plug located on the driver's side of the gearbox and top up the fluid. It is full when a small amount of fluid dribbles out the hole there. Lightly tighten the fill bolt, start the car and run through the gears again, then check the level is fine before finally tightening the fill plug. And the job's done. As far as an install goes, I'm really pleased with that and that kit has been pretty good. It's nice to actually find something that is actually bolt on. Everything we needed was in there. We didn't need to drill or cut or fabricate something. It was all there, so quite pleased with that kit. And there should be no more worrying about your radiator failing and contaminating your gearbox fluid. As a bonus, this should be more efficient than your factory cooler. And it's a good reason why a lot of people do this install if they're doing a lot of towing or anything that needs more cooling for that transmission, such as going to a higher power figure, pushing more power through that gearbox, which we'll be doing on this car coming up. Keep an eye out for that, we're starting that one shortly. Now there is one small trade-off that we should mention before we finish up, and I'm sure some of you will already have questions about it. The factory cooler is attached to the radiator. That means that it also speeds up the process of heating that fluid and getting it up to operating temperature because it has the coolant right next to it and that will help bring up that transmission fluid to operating temp. Now that may well be true but I'm pretty sure most of us drive our cars even if we try to avoid it with a slightly cold gearbox, slightly cold coolant. We don't all sit there and wait long enough to warm it up, warm up all the fluids. You'd be sitting around all day. Most of us jump in our cars and drive away. So whether you like it or not that coolant still takes time to warm up. Your transmission fluid still takes time to warm up. So why don't you just play it safe, keep your neighbors happy, and just take it easy for a while. It's probably what you should be doing anyway. It lets your fluids come up to temp. And let's be honest, they're modern cars. They're circulating that fluid pretty quickly and they're built to be driven like that. So I don't think it should be a big issue. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please consider liking and subscribing. It helps us out and share it around with a mate. And as always, thanks for watching guys. Cheers. Ugh, I drank too much transmission milkshake again.